Today we're going to talk about how the Holy Spirit is our helper. on the Women Rock Show. My name is Pastor Jess, and I'm honored that you would watch the show and come along on this journey with us. We are going to dive into some scripture, and we are going to hear from heaven today for our lives. These verses are powerful, and they are beautiful celebration of what God has for us in our everyday. I know that you are a daughter of the King. I hope you know you're a daughter of the King, and we are going to learn and dive in and lean in and hear what he is speaking to us. Society wants to tell us a whole bunch of stuff. It wants to redefine who we are, tell us what our identity is, but did you know that Christ already wrote it all out for us, that he has everything we need for our everyday living? And so let's dive in together. Let's be all that God has called us to be. In our times together, we have been covering many, many topics that the Lord wants us to live in and live out for our lives. So today we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. You see, when you said yes to Jesus, you stepped into the kingdom of God and you are a new creation in Christ. Many times as a pastor, I see so many Christians living defeated, powerless, running on empty, stuck in life, and living in an overwhelming sadness. What if I told you today that can all change? You see, I want to introduce you. I feel like I sound like an infomercial, but I want to introduce you to something. I want to introduce you to the Holy Spirit. He is the third part of the Trinity. He is God himself, and we are going to dive into all that he is and all that he is in our lives and how we get to partner with him here on this earth and how we get to do life with him in an incredible way. You see, the Holy Spirit is on your team, he's on your side, and he's always speaking in and through you. When I grew up in church, in my church, I always heard about the Holy Spirit. I knew exactly who he was. I saw firsthand how he moved, how he healed, how people would be prayed over and they would have evidence and they would speak in tongues. I saw legs being straightened. I saw God move. And so I only knew him as I knew him for myself. But when I met my husband, Dan, he came from a different background and a different denomination. And we would begin to talk and I would, him and his friends would say things like, well, the Holy Spirit left with the last apostle. And I was like, show me in the Bible where that says that. I don't understand where you're coming from with that. And then they would say things like, well, speaking in tongues is not for today. And I'd be like, well, you guys want to hear me speak in tongues because I totally have my prayer language. And um, I don't hear him speak. I would hear them say that. I don't hear him speak, but I would hear the Holy Spirit speak to me all the time, guide me and direct me and teach me things. And so I was having a hard time because I didn't know that Christians lived this way. I thought everybody knew that we have the Holy Spirit working in us and through us and partnering with us in this world to get the mission and the kingdom of God out into the world, into a lost and dying world. And so let's dive in. Let's learn who the Holy Spirit is together. Who is God? Who is the Holy Spirit? First, let's start that he is our helper. Isn't that good news? This is good news because he is here for you. He's here to help you. He's here to guide you. He's here to support you. He's here to build you up. Go with me to John 14, 15 through 18. And actually, I'm going to read it in the Amplified. Now, we always joke that the Amplified version is the woman's version of the Bible because it has extra words. But I'll tell you, I love how it so deeply explains the beauty of this moment. So go with me to verse 15. If you really love me and you will keep and obey my commandments. I love that right there. It's just plain and simple. God's just saying, if you love me, you'll do what I say. Verse 16. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper. Now, when you look up the word another in the Greek, it actually means one in the same. It means one besides me in the addition to me and one just like me. The remaining one of two. Same as if Jesus was physically with us. So he is the third part of the Trinity. I love that. So we're going to pick this back up and it says he's the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, the standby to be with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. You see, when the world tries to tell you that they're speaking the truth or, or they're the ones that have it all together, I'm here to tell you if they don't are not filled with the spirit of God, they are speaking lies. That God is the only one that can carry truth and knows all truth and is truth himself. And so it says that whom the world cannot receive and take 
to its heart because it does not see him and it does not know him. But you know him because he, the Holy Spirit, remains with you continually and will be with you. I will not leave you as orphans, that's good news, comfortless, bereaved, or helpless. I will come back to you. I love this verse because when we said yes to Jesus and we asked him to come into our heart and be the Lord and Savior of our life, the Holy Spirit came and lives and dwells in us. These are the temple of the Most High God. Your body carries God with you everywhere you go. Isn't that good news today? I don't know if you've ever been told that, but you are on mission and you carry Jesus with you everywhere you go. I love how Jesus knew that he had to teach us about the Holy Spirit. And he was so gracious and he knows that we as humans have a lot of questions. And so he taught his disciples and he recorded it in the word for us. And this is what these verses are about. Jesus recorded it and he tells us that the person is the helper and that we will know him. Jesus introduces the Holy Spirit to us in the spirit of truth and that he is the one with all the answers. Ooh, that's good news. Not the politicians, not the people that we're supposed to look to that don't know what they're talking about, but Jesus is the one who knows all the answers and he has the truth and he is the one with all of it and he knows and he defeated Satan and his lies. That means the lies of Satan are not at work in your life when the Holy Spirit is operating in your life. He is the helper. So what does this mean that he's a helper? It means that he teaches us. John 14, um, verse 26 says, But he's the helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, and the standby. The Holy Spirit in whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me, will act on my behalf. He will teach you some things. No, that's not what that verse says. He will teach you all things. That means he knows all things. There's nothing beyond him. There's nothing too big for him. There's nothing that he can't wrap around and he can teach us. And he is our helper. He will remind us of everything that he has told us. You see, he teaches us how not to live a life of deception. That's good news. Like in the beginning with Eve, when she was deceived by Satan, the Holy Spirit is right there to go, uh uh-uh. Don't listen to that voice. Uh uh uh. Don't follow those people. Uh uh uh. Don't make that investment. Uh uh uh. Don't move that way because don't drive that way today. Go another way. You see, the Holy Spirit's going to help us, guide us, teach us, direct us, and keep us on path to where we need to be so that we are anointed, we are called, and we are blessed, and we're living out the supernatural life that we're called to live. He teaches us. He tells us and teaches us that we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and He is the Holy Spirit that comes and lives and dwells. He boards and lives and dwells with us. He's living with us. He's leading us. You see, I was a very broken girl as a young teenager. And after I came out of this abusive relationship, the other side to it was now recovering. I was mentally broken. I I couldn't like relate with people. I didn't understand who I was in Christ. I didn't understand what I had lost in that relationship. And I had to rebuild from ground zero. I had to learn who I was from the beginning. And God was so gracious. He put me back together and the Holy Spirit would come alongside me. And it was like he would just put puzzle pieces back together and he would help me and he would teach me. And I would see myself a certain way and I'd hear the Holy Spirit go, no, no, no. I didn't say that about you. That's not true. And he would redirect my thinking. I used to call myself stupid all the time because I felt like I was stupid. And the Lord began to show me, where does this root come from? Why are you speaking this over yourself? You're my daughter. You're not stupid. You're called by me. I live and dwell within you. And you need to begin to speak the opposite of who you are. You're actually very smart. And I'm backing you and I'm teaching you on a daily basis. I had to redirect my thinking. I had to reteach myself. I wasn't this dumb girl that I thought I was. I had to become the girl that the Holy Spirit was teaching me to be. But when I would read my Bible, and when I went to college, I went to Bible college. When I went to Bible college, I would just drink this up. It was like pouring into me, and I, I could feel myself just getting smarter and smarter, and I was able to retain. I was able to hold on to things. I was able to remember the things that were important to God. I was able to live life differently than I'd lived before. Why? Because he became my professor. He became my teacher. He became my director, and he wants to do that for you today. You see, he teaches us what is right and what is wrong. Sometimes we don't know this. Maybe you didn't have parents to teach you what was right and wrong. Maybe your teachers in school are so off that they're telling you what is right is actually wrong. We get that a lot nowadays. And yet the Holy Spirit goes, "Uh -uh uh-uh-uh. What is right is what I say is right. What is truth is what I say is truth. And what my word says you can stand on and you can anchor yourself in and you will stand in the middle of a storm and not be taken out. 
So the Holy Spirit will teach you what's right and wrong. He will guard you and guide you. He's the umpire of our soul. You know, he's the one that makes the play calls and he's the one that knows what's right and wrong. He knows where our direction needs to go and he will teach us where to go. So many times I've had to like stop and breathe and go, okay, Holy Spirit. I'm so like get going and I'm like do everything type of a girl, but I had to stop and allow the Holy Spirit time to minister to me, to slow me down so that I could learn. I could learn why are you removing this person from my life or why are you asking me to go over here and do this for you? I don't want to do that, God. And he was just do what I tell you to do. And I would end up doing it and it would be a blessing. There were so many times that I would find myself in a repetitive circumstance and I would be like, okay, obviously I'm going back around this mountain. What are you trying to teach? me Holy Spirit and when I would give him time and I would give him position and place to speak into my heart I would then see the lesson and he would show me I would journal Oh, if you aren't journaling, pull your journal out and begin to talk to God through your journal. Lord, I don't know where you need me to be. I don't know why this is happening and then begin to just pause, wait and listen and write what he tells you, what your spirit man is saying. Learn to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Learn to know him and trust him. Recently, I was having a conversation with one of my kids. He's pretty young. And he was talking to me. He goes, Mom, I think I'm, I'm hearing the voice of God. And I go, I'm sure you are, son. And he goes, well, it's different than me, but it is, sounds like me, but it's not what I would say to myself, Mom. Not at all. It would not be where I would want to go. And I go, well, then that's probably the Holy Spirit. But you got to be careful that it's not the enemy speaking into your life, but it's the Holy Spirit. So you need to learn to hear the voice of God and follow the voice of God so you're not hearing the wrong voices in life. You're not listening to the wrong directions in life because Satan likes to come in and rob and steal and plant seeds and thoughts into our hearts and our minds. But the Holy Spirit is our teacher. He's going to guide us and he's going to back his word, and he's going to stay according to the word. If you can link up with the word and link up with the Holy Spirit, you're going to be safe to be taught by the Holy Spirit. You're going to be safe to know his voice, and you're going to be safe to be guided by him in life. You see, there um, is a time in my life right now, I'm in the middle of a process of remodeling my home, and this is like a new thing for me. And so they've gutted like most of the center of my home and it's not been very fun and so they're asking me all these questions okay where's your tiles where do you want this to be where do you want and i'm like i don't know and we didn't have money for a designer and my mom i remember my mom if you know my mom she is like the most creative person in the world she makes anything that looks normal look extravagantly beautiful and so there's a little pressure you know like okay if that's if i'm her daughter i can do this but you know what i started hearing if you're my daughter, the Holy Spirit would say to me, you can do this. And he said, why don't you ask me? I, and so one morning I came down, I had my coffee in my hands, I had my robe on, and I'm standing in this empty room, just me and the Holy Spirit. And I said, show me what this room needs to look like. And he goes, okay, let's walk through it. And he began to show me where the cabinets should be placed. He began to show me what the fireplace should be should look like. He began to show me even the detail of where are you going to put your Christmas tree because I know that's important to you. And so I thought, oh my goodness, and it's so beautiful so far. And everything we've been picking, every tile, every counter, everything that I'm looking at, I'll ask the Holy Spirit, does this look good together? I'm not quite sure if this looks good. Well, guess what? He's the creative side of the three-part God. He is the creative creative part being. And so he created the heavens and the earth. He knows he is the master designer and I have him at my beck and call at my fingertips. Is that cool or what? Because how much would you pay for a real designer to come in and do that for you? Well, I had the creator of the universe telling me what to do and what tiles to pick and where to place things. He's just been amazing. He is absolutely incredible. He is your best friend. He is your counselor. We'll get into those things. But but he will teach you. So he's teaching me design. He'll, he'll wake me up in the middle of the night with a question about design and I'll go look it up and then it'll take me down a different path. And I see like, I would have never thought that myself. I would have never thought to even ask those questions, but the Holy Spirit is leading me and guiding me. And what he does for me, is just a small example of what he can do for you in your life. Are you looking for a husband? Are you looking how to raise your kids? Are you looking where to live? Are you looking how to escape something that is very dark and dreary? The Holy Spirit is your guider. He is the one who will teach you and show you exactly where to go. You have to stop. You have to wait and you have to listen. You have to begin to allow him to walk you through the process and the different steps. You have to learn how to rethink on these matters. You even have to make a plan with him. Ask the Holy Spirit for a plan. Ask him for a word. Ask him to give you direction. 
In Luke 12, 12, it says, for the Holy Spirit will teach you at the time what needs to be said. Sometimes you don't know what to say. Sometimes you don't know what to do. Let the teacher speak through you in that moment. And then what you say through the Holy Spirit is going to be blessed, anointed, and whatever you choose to do, God's hand will be on it. See, there are times of fear. There are times of concern, of not knowing where we're going to go or what to say. But we have to learn how to lean on the Holy Spirit to teach us a new understanding when this happens. You have to know what to say. And when you know how to respond, you will be able to trust the Holy Spirit in your daily walk. This is something learned. This is something lived. And this is something you will learn to trust. I promise you. Invite him into your every day. Walk out with him every day in this. Talk with him every day. Allow him to help you navigate and teach his way through your life. Today, if you don't know who the Holy Spirit is, I want to introduce you to him. I want, I want to give you an opportunity to ask Jesus to come into your heart and be the leader in the Holy Spirit of your life, the one, the umpire of your heart, the one who leads you and guides you through life. Today, if you've never asked him to be the Lord and Savior of your life, I'm talking to you. Maybe you've been running from God instead of to God. Then you need to get right today with God. You need to give him all of you, every part of you. You need to walk away from your sin, walk away from your past, and run after God. Maybe you've been just kind of messing around and trying all these different types of religious things or spiritual things. And I'm here to tell you today, there's only one God. His name is Jesus. And he loves you. He died on a cross for you. He took your sin and your shame away. And he is asking you to come home and make him the Lord and Savior of your life. And say no to hell and yes to heaven. So this is how it's going to go. I'm going to pray a prayer. And if that's you, go ahead and repeat the prayer after me. Now listen, if you miss a word, it's not about the words of our heart. It's about the attitude of our heart. God is after the heart. He's after our relationship with us. And so when I pray this prayer, I want you to repeat it after me. And I want you to just know that this, you don't get saved by just praying this prayer, but you get saved by believing that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. This is a moment in time where you say, I am choosing God. And so let's pray. Go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes and say, Dear Father God, I come before you and I ask that you would come into my heart and be the Lord and Savior of my life. Holy Spirit, come and fill me, teach me, and show me how to live how you need me to live. Today, forgive me of my sins. I am walking away from hell, and I'm headed for heaven. I have a new purpose, a new call, and a new destiny. You are God and God alone, and I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Father God for filling me, for equipping me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, you can go to our website at www.rockchurch.com and press the Get to Know God button. They'll send you some information to just fill out some stuff and we'll send you a booklet on what to do now that you've been saved. You also need to find a good local church. Listen to me, a Bible-believing, fully Bible, not fake Bible or half Bible where they twist things. A full Bible teaching church people that are passionate for the things of God, people that are hungry for the things of God. You need to get in, meet new friends. You need to learn what the Word of God says about you and your life and get planted into a house. If you're in the local area, I'd love to invite you here to the Rock Church and World Outreach Center here in San Bernardino. I love you girls. Until then, I will see you next time. God bless you.